Those stories still to come here on RT for you. But first, a Finnish priest is under investigation over his statements against one of the world's most wanted men, Doku Umarov, and an online mouthpiece of Chechen militants. Pastor Yua Malari was charged with inciting racial hatred right after his interview with us, RT, in which he described Umarov as a terrorist. That, despite the fact Umarov himself has claimed responsibility for many of Russia's worst terror attacks, including the recent bombing of Moscow's Domodedovo airport, Mollery has also been a long-time critic of a website called the Kavkaz Center, where extremists from the North Caucasus openly express their views. The website is banned here in Russia and many European countries, but freely operates in Finland. Well, for more on this, let's cross live now to Phil Rees, who's an expert on terrorism and also the author of the book Dining with Terrorists, Meetings with the World's Most Wanted Militants. Thanks very much indeed for joining us here on RT. Tell us, what, what does this actually tell us about the situation there in Finland? Does it actually mean that terrorists and extremists can enjoy freedom of speech there and priests can't? <laughs> well, Bill, I think this is actually a, a fascinating case, which, um, apart from on, on Russia Today, it's got very little coverage because it does actually invite questions over the limitations of freedom of speech. Uh, when should those who encourage acts of terrorism be allowed freedom of speech? Um, but of course, the pastor involved also made criticisms of Chechnyans um, in Finland. And uh, he's been, it's been suggested that he's accused um, of inciting racial hatred, which is another law which has been brought in in most European countries um, in the last decade, which again limits um, freedom of speech. So I think this case is very, very important in terms of discussing both of those issues and how they actually relate to the freedom of people to be able to speak out. Not only was he criticizing the website, but also he was saying that the Finnish authorities refer to Umarov, uh, one of the world's most wanted terrorists, as a president. Now, why do you think that Finland would have a different attitude, a different stance over a man that the rest of the world seems to be reviling at the moment? Well, I mean, freedom of speech is something that is, 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 is valued in, in many countries, in, including, um, you know, Finland. But I can tell you that this site would probably not be allowed to be set up in Britain and have its um, website um, rooted here. And that's because Britain has brought in laws in the 2000 Terrorism Act and the two, th 2006 Terrorism Act. And, um, I mean, it, it says that any website or any literature... Now, I've, I've got the quote here, which glorifies, praises or celebrates political violence anywhere in the world would not be allowed to be to go out would not be allowed to exist in that country. Now, clearly, you know, Finland, and I'm not acquainted with, with Finnish law as well as I am with British law, but clearly Finland doesn't have that kind of criteria to limit the rights of sites like this to, uh, to exist. But Finland then couldn't be therefore accused of harboring terrorism? Well, it's a, it's a difficult question. I mean, obviously, if there are people in Finland who have been accused of acts of terrorism and there's evidence against them, I think the Finnish authorities would require, and I'm sure they would cooperate with the Russian authorities, to find those people. I think the trouble is that you've got this grey area. You've got basically people who support certain political causes. Now, when does that support for a political cause turn into a support for violence. Now, clearly, if you are supporting those people in the Caucasus Emirates, I think that you are supporting acts of terrorism, quite clearly, from the things they've done to Russia. But it's a fine line. And obviously, other political causes, you can debate them. You can have discussions. And I think these are very valuable. So there's a fine line to be drawn. And I think that certainly in Britain, they decided after 2001 to move that line to restrict freedom when it comes to encouraging acts of terrorism. Terrorism. But clearly, it seems to me, Finland has not. Well, just briefly, um, you're talking about acts of terrorism. Of course, Russia has been victim of uh, uh, attacks recently, and uh, Doku Umarov uh, has been claiming responsibility for those attacks. Do you see, though, the recent attacks here as Russia's problem, or is this global terrorism? And if that's the case, shouldn't Finland be involved in helping to combat that global threat? Well, certainly the Caucasus Emirates... Um, Dr. Marafino, they, they are tied in 
with uh, Al Qaeda. They've been, all, all, you know, the 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 the, the, the resistance, the, the the people in the, the the militants and terrorists in the Caucasus have always had close ties to um, Afghanistan. Um, I think that, unfortunately, what this shows is while the globe um, and the world can talk about a war on terror, um, in the fact. A lot of countries still support insurgents in other countries if they feel that their political interests um, and their leverage over that country uh, may be helped by that. And I, I'm afraid that's a, a tragic reality of global politics. Phil Rees, very interesting to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us here live on RT there in London. Thank